got the real deal now. Gonna kick this sorry ass out on the street. How's it going, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to week number nine of the Lowdown Show on No Holds Barred Wrestling Podcast. We are your Canadian-based WWE podcast that reviews and discusses Monday Night Raw and Tuesday Night Smackdown from the past week. Also during the show, our segment called The List of Ten, our top moments of the week, will be missing this show. But we will have our WWE headlines where we talk about any important news and rumors related to the WWE Every week, the Lowdown Show is broadcasted live right here on Spreaker, available at, at Spreaker.com slash NHBWP, or on the Spreaker app, available for all Android and Apple devices. After we are done recording, the podcast is posted in full on Spreaker itself, on our YouTube channel, YouTube.com slash NHBWR, and also on iTunes and Stitcher Radio by searching up The Lowdown Show. So go check us out wherever it's easier and convenient for you to listen to us. You can follow the podcast on Twitter at, at NoHoldsBarWP. Enjoy the conversation, have your thoughts and questions read right here on the show. We are available to follow on Facebook and Instagram as well by searching up No Holds Bar WP. So all links will be in the description for you on YouTube down below. I am your host, the self-proclaimed greatest host, Kyle Masters. Every week I'm continuing to be joined by my corporate co-host. He is the boss, blissful boss, Mr. Corporate himself, Corporate Happy. Hello. Hello. All right. Doing so uh, early today. We had an interesting uh, day, the start of the day. I know it was early. Um, interesting, interesting morning. Uh, we had a, uh anonymous Twitter fan unboxing video we did before the show, which we'll be releasing on YouTube. It's on our YouTube channel. And, uh, yeah, it's uh, it's quite interesting. So, and he re- he's yeah. renamed, he's uh, named anonymous. Whoever it is, we appreciate it. So, thank yeah, you. Yeah, he much. didn't reveal himself in the unboxing like I thought it would happen. But, uh, whoever it is, uh, if you want to DM us on Twitter and let us know who you are, we'll give you a shout on the next show, man. Uh, we, we appreciate the gift, man. Thank you. You guys don't have to do that, but, uh, we do appreciate yeah, it. Thank you. That's something that you you really needed and didn't have to your collection. So, yeah, one of your favorites. Yeah. Um, Mason Dunbar and Greg in the chat. What's going on, guys? Uh, got an interesting show this week. Uh, we're going to be doing the for Sunday. Oh yeah, for Sunday, guys. Uh, I'm working on it. I'm going to be doing working on it the next two days. But uh, if you guys are new to the podcast or follow the podcast, you know that uh, we every when well, we're trying to do every last couple of pay per views, we do a live show right after, and we do a review show right after the pay per view is done. We do some call ins and stuff. Um, what I'm going to do is. It's going to be a little bit different this Sunday. I'm trying it out. I'm going to do some test runs the next couple days, see if it works. And if it does work, we'll be doing it via YouTube Live this Sunday for the uh, Extreme Rules review show. So it will be live on YouTube, and uh, there will be the chat there as well. Hoping to get some more followers and some more call-ins that way. So we're going to try it that way on YouTube Live and, uh, this Sunday. And Mason, don't worry. You'll be the first one to get your call. Yeah, Mason, don't worry. We promised you last show you'll be the first caller. So you'll be the first caller. And uh, we'll also be live on Spreaker still. I'm going to see if I can do both at the same time. So uh, maybe without stealing a lot of bandwidth, we'll see what happens. It's going to be brutal. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> I'm going to do some test runs the next couple days, and I'll update everyone on Sunday how it goes. And uh, basically, yeah, I'm going to try to do it on YouTube Live this Sunday. So, uh We'll see what happens after that. Um, other than that, uh, we'll be doing the Extreme Rules predictions at the end of the show right after we're done the news, so stay tuned for that. It'll be right after the last segment uh, on this show. And if you guys want to support the podcast, you, know, you don't have to send us gifts like we had earlier today. If you want to support the podcast, we have a Patreon page. Uh, for those who have asked and not donated, it's pretty shocking. Um, but we have Patreon. Little as a dollar a month supports the podcast. You get some interesting things from donating to the podcast and supporting each month. We also have a GoFundMe page which supports our trip to WrestleMania next year. In April, we'll be heading to New Orleans. We'll be driving there, not flying. It's crazy, I know, from Niagara Falls to New Orleans. A big car ride. I think it's about 22, 23-hour drive. So uh, anything helps. So if you guys want to fund the podcast, there is the GoFundMe and Patreon plug for the show. Um, we're on SmackDown this week. Oh, my God. Oh, my Can't God. sat through all that. Oh, it was rough this week, especially for Raw on the goal. I'm sure I got lots to talk about for Raw because ah, <laughs> it was oh bad. <laughs> Raw was garbage this week. I don't care what anybody says. I'm I'm done listening to people's opinions about how good Raw this was, was this week. It was terrible. It was so lazy and so bad 
They could have done such a better job than what they put out. That fucking crap we saw this week. That was great. SmackDown was one, but barely. We finally get a SmackDown one. Uh, post shakeup era. Call them winners. Yeah, I raw man. Holy crap, man! Fellow was watching WCW Nitro, man. I don't know what the hell was going on. And then it, there was some stuff that it was okay, and I'll talk about that. I, I basically both review shows this week. I've only I only wrote down highlights I want to talk about. I I know in my head what happened that was bad, and I didn't need to write it down because it was so bad. I I really didn't. I, I couldn't bring myself to type it. It was terrible. Um. Anyways, uh, right before we do the tweets, we are going to announce our Twitter fan of the month for May. Do we have a drum roll? Uh, I still don't have the drum roll effect. I keep forgetting, right? I keep, I'm meaning to go back and listen to our previous podcast, so it's basically like a reminder for myself to do stuff, and I just forget to listen through it all. So we'll do one ourselves. Yeah, do one ourselves. So the Twitter fan of the month for the month of Ju- or May is Tyler Jones. At Tyler Jones twenty two on Twitter, he won our Twitter fan of the month for this continued support of the podcast. So month of May, month of May. Thank you, Tyler Jones, and Tyler Jones will get a shout out on each and every show, and he will get his tweets read uh, first in the month of June. So thank you, Tyler Jones, for oh, your continued support. Glad you won something, unlike uh, yeah. Predators right now. <laughs> yeah, they're in trouble. So we'll start off with Tyler Jones's tweets. He put, uh, Raw was fucking terrible as usual. A monkey could book better. I agree with him with that. Even for a go-home show, Joe did not look good. Three out of ten. So a nice uh, corporate rating there from Tyler Jones. And I agree. I have to agree with him, man. Raw was bad, man. A monkey could have done better than what Raw put out there. What about a beaver? Uh, Beaver's already controlling stuff over there on uh, Monday Night Raw. (laughs) Oh uh, man, but that's a, I like that rating. I will I'll, I'll give you my rating after, but uh, we'll see. Tyler Jones also put SmackDown was uh, slightly better, but not saying much. Four to ten. WWE just sucks right now, and they have an incredible roster, which is so true. They have an insane roster right now, and just, they don't use it. It's insane. Um, and Greg put in the chat: Juggy disappears and Tyler Jones returns. Hmm. <laughs> Buried him. Uh, Tyler Jones also puts, I'm so ready for this pay-per-view to be over. I want new feuds. Sad thing is we're still going to get Hardys with Shazaro, etc. Hmm, I don't know about that. I think there's going to be a different feud stemmed off that, depending on uh, where the titles go. Um, what else did Tyler Jones put? I think that's it for his tweets. I don't see any more. Unless Twitter has hit him for me again. I think he only had three. Yeah, that's it. Yep. So... Thank you, Tyler Jones. Thank you, Tyler and Jones. Congrats on your being the new Twitter fan of the month for the yep. month of May. Next set of tweets. One's come from Mason Dunbar and Mason Storm WPC. He's got his own wrestling podcast. He puts both shows were okay. I give each a four out of ten. I wouldn't say four is an okay. Four is a bad rating. Yeah, but it, it, you got the raw part right. SmackDown, we'll, we'll get into that. Um, thank next, you, Mason Storm. Thank you, Mason Storm. Next set of tweets. Glorious Greg. At xgilly929, he puts, uh, Raw was okay, nothing special, but I did enjoy the main event match between Rollins and hashtag no man gains. I'll give Raw a 4 out of 10 this week. Nice generous rating there by Glorious Greg. Thank you, Greg. He puts, SmackDown was decent. It was an amazing to see the New Day return, and the fashion file grows on me every week. So it does for me, does for me too. And the brawl that ensued between the five women were fighting for a shot. And Naomi's title is now a Money in the Bank ladder match. And it was amazing to see. And the main event was good as well. Uh, I'll give SmackDown a 6 out of 10 this week. Yeah, that's a good rating right there. 6 out of 10. And also can't wait for the return of Braun. Hashtag. <laughs> yes. I get that roar in there. Braun Strowman. Man, I miss Braun Strowman. It's sad to say I miss Braun Strowman. <laughs> Braun help. Strowman's become one of the MVPs of Raw. Right. Uh, what match are you guys looking forward to the most this Sunday at Extreme Rules? Nothing. Hmm. <laughs> A pre-show match. That way I can stop watching the rest of the pay-per-view. I guess the Fatal <laughs> Five way, but if Reigns wins, I don't even think I can do the review show. God. Um, I guess the, the Cruiserweight match between Aries and Neville will probably be pretty good. Yeah. 
or the Hardys. I want my boy game. Ballard to win, but the match I'm looking forward to is Cesaro and uh, the Hardys, man. It's, I, that cage match is going to be insane. I want to know if it's going to be Tornado Tag, yeah. if they're going to be able to fit the, the other member of the team yeah. on the outside with the cage. There. And my least uh, looking forward to match is sadly the women's match. I do not care about the Kendall stick on a pole WCW Vince Russo match. I don't care about either of the women's matches. Yeah. Friggin' terrible oh, mixed tag match. Greg, you put hashtag roar again, but I, 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 I stopped that at one roar, okay? I do run war report tweets. I can't give you two. Come on now. <laughs> Ugh. God damn it, glorious. Greg, no more roars. Only one. Uh, anyways, uh, next set of tweets goes to our former Twitter fan of the month. And that is Casey Salvis. Oh, no. I South. purposely don't read his tweets so I can hear them live. Just... <laughs> All right, well, here we go. Raw was awful. That Bailey and Alexa segment was an embarrassment. Almost as bad as watching Roman wrestle. <laughs> Whoever wrote this should be fired. <laughs> Bailey should go back to NXT. Also, don't understand why Roman beat Rollins. Of course, Roman gets booed again. Oh, yeah, he won because... Uh, oh, Vince, and then it cut off because people tweet at the same time. Because Vince wants Roman to look strong. One out of ten. He's got the gif of Shaq laughing. <laughs> SmackDown was very good. Enjoyed everything about it. Can't wait for the women's Money in the Bank match. Thought Mahal's promo was awesome. Uh, also put uh, for that Brazongo once again was outstanding only thing I don't like is the New Day it's still annoying <laughs> please turn them heel 8 out of 10 how do you not like the New Day man they just came back <laughs> oh Tyler Jones joined the chat oh our new Twitter fan of the month yeah Congrats, Tyler, Tyler Jones, Jones if you're just tuning in now you won Twitter fan of the month Tyler Jones thank you uh, oh god I Guys, just, number your tweets, please, because it helps when we're reading them. Yeah, because when they all come in at the same time, it's it's ridiculous because Twitter doesn't know how to organize anything. So do like one of four, two of four, three yeah. of four, four of four. Uh, Casey also puts, also, please get rid of the cruiserweight division or move it to full sail because nobody cares. Seriously, I watched 205 Live this week. No one stayed. Not even just that. It's just they don't appreciate that style of wrestling. And they don't, they don't like... Oh, I hate the storylines. For some reason, I hate the storylines that are going on, man. I feel like, again, like what Glorious Greg said, the the, the full or the, what Casey said, the, the full sale university crowd would appreciate it more. And maybe they would give more freedom to them or for the people running NXT to run 205 Live. And I feel like it'd be exactly. better. Yeah. Uh, next set of tweets, Trey Patterson. At Trey Patterson. He uh, numbered his tweets. Thank you. <laughs> Raw is absolute ass. As much as I like Alexa, that This Is Your Life segment was unwatchable. 100% agree with that, and I'll get into that in the Raw review. Also, you know, Raw was terrible when the best match of the night involved the Roman Reigns. <laughs> Hashtag not a compliment. Hashtag the big dog is still shit. <laughs> Two out of ten. <laughs> oh, man, the Roman Reigns heat. SmackDown was good. AJ Styles and Dolph was fantastic. And the woman's Money in the Bank was still amazing television. I don't like that KO has lost two weeks in a row. Yeah, I don't like that either, man. He still looks like a strong U.S. champion. He's lost twice. I mean, he's lost to Nakamura, which is credible in some way. But I like the way they did it this week. I'll get into that in a review. Uh, it makes the champ look weak, he says. Again, I'll get into that. And I don't understand why the New Day automatically get a title shot. There should have been a number one contenders exactly. match with Brazongo. I don't understand why WWE is going along with these. Nobody has to earn anything anymore. What happened to qualifying SmackDown. matches? It's SmackDown. You put hashtag make them earn it. Hashtag SmackDown is H. What 6. Is 5 out of 10 for SmackDown. Trey gives it. Thank you. Thank you, Trey. Uh, Trey Patterson. I think they're planning on calling into the show on Sunday night. Ooh, the, can't the wait Nashville for that. Nashville boys. Uh, next set of tweets comes from Michael Chow. Right, they come from Michael Chow at Michael Chow TV on Twitter. He gets his tweets read with a theme music. And guys, you're wondering why he gets a theme music because he won our 2016 Twitter Fan of the Year. And if you win that glorious award, you will get your entrance theme before every single tweet gets read on the show throughout the year. Glorious. So, hey, was that uh, a 
foreshadow for Greg? I don't know. No, it was not, Larry. <laughs> don't get excited. Uh, but Michael Chow has his own wrestling podcast as well. There will be MCTV, the after show, so go check it out. He's also on Spreaker, and give him a follow on Twitter. I think he's doing his Extreme Rules predictions on Saturday. Yep. Uh, Michael Chow TV puts, Raw was okay, but definitely didn't feel like a go-home show. Four out of ten. The good, the main event, the bad, creative, this is your life segment. Ah, <laughs> oh, yes. The horrible. The, I hope WWE just gets rid of those for good, man. That segment was fantastic. Uh, okay. I have a theory on Kurt Angle's storyline. Hashtag, you heard it here first. Ooh, I Michael believe Chow's Corey Graves' source is v- Stephanie McMahon. This will lead to Angle being fired as Raw GM. Stephanie will return and reveal the new GM to be Corey Graves. In a twist, it is revealed that Graves and Stephanie had worked together the whole time. This is will this will lead to Raw being full heel authority figures at SummerSlam. Shane McMahon will reveal that will then reveal Angle as the new SmackDown Live GM, replacing the ending contract of Daniel Bryan. Angle is a Angle in a big twist will then have SmackDown Live's Money in the Bank winner cash in against Lesnar the same night at SummerSlam as revenge for Stephanie screwing Angle over. The Universal title will now be on SmackDown Live until the next pay per view. This will slow this will all lead to into a Raw vs SmackDown again at Survivor Series. Holy wow. Crap. <laughs> Michael Chow Michael Chow's super creative in a hashtag after that. I mean, I don't know if the, what this whole Corey Graves thing's about, but mm-hmm. and where did this all also come from? Like, why are they doing this? Exactly. But knowing WWE they will not do something that smart. Yeah. It's, I don't know. It's that's, <laughs> that's uh, an insane creative idea. I, that'd be that'd be crazy if it happens. But knowing WWE, whenever a good idea presents itself, they're like, nah, let's go with the less shittier idea. You know, let's go. With, I think the shittier idea looks way better than that. Uh, Michael Charles put SmackDown Live was okay, four out of ten. The good, the main event, the bad. Why the ref wouldn't start the women's match looked so dumb. Creative is so bad. Sorry about the flood of tweets, guys. By the way, how was the Collecticon you guys went to? Interesting. It was. Uh, I didn't find a lot, but uh, a lot of wrestling stuff. But no, but you know, it was normal. It was like a normal thing for us, right? It was picked up a figure of your girl, the Queen Charlotte, to complete the four horse women. Yeah, and I yeah. uh, got Kyle here, Baron Corbin, for uh, his birthday present. Uh, I think. Do we have any late? We have late tweets coming in, actually. Yep. Uh, Joshy J. Oh, my boy Joshy J. Yeah, he's getting his tweets in right now 14 minutes ago. Raw was meh. The triple threat was awesome, and somehow I'm interested in a Gold Dust R Truth feud. I am too, actually. I'll get into that in the review. But everything else fell short. The Alexa segment on Raw was the worst thing I've ever seen. The main event was boring, and I can't get behind the cruiserweights. Again, another person feeling the same way as we do. SmackDown was good. I really liked the women's brawl. I love that. Now we'll have two Money in the Bank ladder matches. Not sure if I want to see the New Day come in and win the titles right away because, but ju- I just don't know what to do or what could, what could you do with the Usos as champs? I like seeing Ziggler steal once again style. Okay, we'll have something to do with that when we get to that. And the match was very good. Raw three point five, SmackDown six. Thank you, Joshy J. Thank you, Joshy J. For your late tweet there. Part timer. And that's good. Yeah, I'm gonna close the tweets down. No more tweets. All right. Junkie Brown, where are you at? Yeah, man. You're getting ripped apart. Get, your boy's getting roasted here. Yeah, you're you, not even responding you gotta, at all. You got to defend your boy, man. You're the, like the biggest Roman Reigns fan we know, except for uh, besides Casey Salvis, man. <laughs> <laughs> you guys ever want to send Casey something? Send him some Roman Reigns merch, man. He really yeah. needs some. Like he, 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 he's, he's saving up. He's... He, he, is his pennies right now for that Roman Reigns vest on the shop, man. He really wants it. I know he wants to wear it everywhere he goes, man. He, he's waiting for it. <laughs> Start uh, me for Casey's Roman Reigns vest. <laughs> I'm gonna crop a vest on him. <laughs> it's like a picture. Okay, we'll get into this uh, horrendous hashtag. Dude, Raw was so fire. bad this week. Oh my god, what the hell did I watch this week? And for one, know. it was a shake again. Like newspapers, at like the the creative papers are just everywhere on the floor, and they just picked up whatever looked good and then put it out there, man. It was so bad. Be lucky you didn't have to watch it live for three hours. This is a go home show. Four extreme rules, and you produce that crap. There's no excuse for what they produced this week. It was garbage. 
Go home shows are usually bad. Dude. I am not excited for Extreme Rules after this. I'm not at all either. Like I know they're bad, but this was even <laughs> this is even worse than what our usual go home show is. Like, and, and for How is it supposed to get people to want to buy the pay per view or buy the network, right? And for writing down a review, literally, I didn't. I wrote nothing about the bad stuff because it was so bad I couldn't bring myself to type it. <laughs> like, oh my god! So. I'm just going to talk about the highlights, which kind of intrigued me and what I think should be worthy of talking about on the show. I'm sorry. I, I can't sit here and review an entire show that's it, completely garbage. Like, literally, it brings back to our usual hashtag, hashtag dumpster fire for Raw, because it is dumpster fire. It was bad. So we'll talk about the, the giant elephant in the room, I guess, for Raw. And basically what I think the most talked about thing on Raw was, it was this this text message and phone call that uh, Corey Graves got um, it, uh, this all started when, when Corey Graves the camera was on the commentators and he's on his phone he received a phone call and he suddenly got up without any explanation he just said I gotta go and then he left and then Booker T and Mike, or Michael Cole were like what the hell where the hell is this guy going right um, uh, yeah Michael Chow just tuning in seeing that the podcast started early yeah sorry Michael Chow we had to start a little bit early this, uh, today um, so we're talking about the whole uh Corey Graves thing. So backstage, uh, Corey Graves w- uh, was g- give his phone to Kurt Angle, and Kurt Angle had like the the most shocked look on his face and confused look. And Angle reading it and notes that someone referred to him as a disgrace, as an Olympic gold medalist. Okay, that's interesting. And then Graves says he supports Angle and enjoys the job he's doing. And then Angle says if this gets out, it could ruin him. So. You know, what I keep thinking about now that Michael Chow gave us that that uh, the creative idea. I'm thinking that that could be right. <laughs> if Michael Chow is right here, man, that'll be like see your pick. That'd be the pick of the year right there. Um, Michael Chow, you might just win Twitter Fan of the Year again just for that. <laughs> if this comes if that out. comes true. Um, so later on in the night, we had a backstage setting with the revival. So the revival, the revival got shown on TV. Uh, there with Charlie Caruso, uh, Scott Dawson said that they had nothing to do with what happened to Enzo Amore. Dash Wilder's jaw is still wired shut, so they couldn't have done anything. And so he doesn't add anything to the proceedings, obviously, because he can't talk. Uh, Charlie Crusoe shows him uh, footage of the Revival walking behind Sasha Banks' uh, backstage promo the week before. And they kind of zoom in. They actually like an HD clear, way clearer than the video I, I tweeted. <laughs> and it shows them both uh, walking backstage. And then it had uh, Scott Dawson with his taped wrist. Hmm. I, think, I think they're making this too obvious. I think, um, like, are we going to get into the whole Cass and Enzo thing? Yeah, I'm going to get into that too. But again, they're making it obvious for both things, which makes it really, really hard to work out. Uh, backstage, so they said that the, they're just walking around before even Enzo got attacked. So, okay. Uh, Big Cass then confronted Corey Graves on the commentary desk later on, or later on the night for insult for uh, for Graves insulting that or insinuating that Cass had something to do with what Enzo did, and then. Uh, Grace kind of backpedals and denies it, and they kind of just, like, shake hands. My, I listened to Michael Chow's podcast last night. Didn't go listen to M- WWMC TV. He had a really interesting thing if you put it together, because apparently the week before, Corey Graves said th- or, uh, said that on commentary that he wants to shake the hand of whoever attacked Enzo. And then he and did it Big this Cass week. And Big Cass shook yeah. his hand this week. So if anybody can put that together, yeah. I don't know if that's... If that's just like going way oh, too in in deep I don't want it, it to or... happen. These guys can't get split up, man. Because Big Cass not gonna go anywhere as a singles competitor, man. There's too many people gonna overshadow him on Raw. I just think that they both they both add something to each other. Like if you put a, if you take them both apart, you're missing something. Yeah. Because Cass is the muscle, the big wrestler, and Enzo is the 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 talker. If you split them up, then I think I, I think they lose their. I don't know. They lose their their juice. Like yeah. they, they they lose anything that's making them a tag team. And then we said it before. Like they should be put on SmackDown because they would do better as a tag team on SmackDown. Again, bring Carmella back in the mix. But it would be really sad if this team got split up and never held either the NXT or WWE tag team championships. In That'd their be sad. Era, as being one of the most over tag teams that we've they seen. They need to. They need to get this underdog win over with already, man. I, w- I thought they would have done it by now. And you know what? If you want Cass to have a singles run, keep Enzo as his manager. Like, just have yeah. Enzo be Cass's manager. I'm fine with that. They can be heels. They can be a cool heel team. 
I don't understand why they want to split Enzo up from Cash because I think it's going to ruin Enzo. Like yeah. He's just going to become a jobber. Yeah. And they might as well tool him and put him in the 205 Live Division or something because it's just it's a shame that they would break, break these guys up. I know they've had a, they have a few new tag teams and they got the the new Titus brand tag team. Yeah. But I just don't know if it's enough depth. Yeah. Uh, backstage, Enzo is laid out once again. So this is the last part of this raw. Again, he's laid out, and Cass is checking on Enzo. Angle walks up. Cass says, "This is this is this has to be the revival. Like, this can't be anyone else." And Angle says that the revival left the building, and then Cass kind of called him out, saying, "Well, you know, they can't just walk back in the building and attack him." And then uh, Cass says uh, he doesn't buy it, and Cass is not going to leave Enzo's side again. Seems hmm. like he's getting really defensive. Yeah. So maybe it is. Maybe, maybe it they isn't. are trying to swerve oh. us to say that it isn't the revival. I hope it's not. Uh, but again, maybe they're making it too obvious that maybe they're making us think that it's going to be a heel turn by Cass. Hmm. Maybe it's somebody else. Maybe it's uh. Yeah, maybe someone we don't know. It's going to be a big swerve. Maybe one. Well, if not, then I'm typical WWE maybe not it's swerving Kalisto. us. <laughs> it's Kalisto. Uh, so again, like David Derby is making it very hard to see who actually attacked Enzo. Uh, they're making it obvious on both sides. Uh, like maybe, maybe it's Braun. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not done with you. Yeah. No, he would come in like a freight train. He would definitely know. And this, but this has it's weird how they're kind of incorporating two things into one year because now we don't even what the hell did the text message to Fungo have to do with all this? Like what? What? It, it, it's basically talking about Kurt Angle's job on the line. So what does that have to do with Enzo? I guess Kurt Angle didn't attack Enzo twice. What if it was Kurt Angle? Can you imagine that? <laughs> or he sent somebody to do it? Yeah. Uh, like, are the Revival innocent here? And if they are, that to me, that's just like... It's too babyface for them to come out and deny it. And and they ended up being right and them telling the truth. Like, they look like the good maybe guys they, here. If they would have come out and said, you know... We do, you don't know. Maybe we did. Maybe we didn't. Yeah, that would have been better. That, they're still credible heels. Now it's like, ugh, it's just dirty be baby face bullshit. Oh my god! Just but it, I guess it's an interesting storyline. But like, yeah. I have a feeling the ending of this is just going to be terrible. <laughs> like, I have a feeling that something's just going to happen. And it's just gonna you're going to love this in the chat. <laughs> Michael Chap puts it's Maggie Simpson after shooting Mr. Burns. She's going to attack. She's going on an attacking spree. Oh, that two part episode that was great. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh. uh, so let's talk about something just to, to get out of the way too. And I, it's got me heated because I had someone call me out on Twitter saying that uh, it's it makes sense for Rich Swan to be Sasha's partner because it's in his hometown. Um, I'm glad Sasha's on TV and she's in a different feud and Ross kind of incorporating or having two women's feuds and they're kind of incorporating the 205 Live division in it. Um, but Darby chose the wrong partner in my opinion. You have Cedric Alexander who has a history with Noam Dar and Alicia Fox would be a perfect match for this. But you chose Rich Swan. Why? Because this is hometown? That makes no sense. Why couldn't you just have Rich Swan face Noah or uh, Drew Gulak in a pre-show match in his hometown? Why the hell does he have to be added to this? It makes literally no sense at all. He just he feels uh, he seems out of place in this too. I I don't care if it's his hometown. It's gonna be one of those nether WB typical moments where they bury someone in their hometown. So your girl and and and, and Rich Swan have more percentage to lose this Sunday. And then Sasha's doing the Rich Swan dance, and I'm just like, it's bad, man. Watching, Cedric man? Alexander would be sick, man. They both are like boss type characters. Cedric Alexander is, is, is his return now. He's out for making a name for himself. Why not pair him with Sasha Banks? And he's not getting any reaction on 205 Live because the 205 Live just needs to stop going to these little hick towns. Yeah. Uh, we uh, got a lot going on in the chat right now. Yeah. Michael Chow, big question. Why is Cass never around when his best friend gets attacked? Greg puts something. says, by the way, the briefcase for the men's money in the bank ladder match is for a shot at the WWE title. Kills the idea of the briefcase being cashed in. Yeah, I... See, we don't know. If, did they specify that it's only for the SmackDown yeah, title? They didn't even say a contract either, did they? Did they say just the Money in the Bank title match and the winner gets a shot? No. We'll they, see. They, they don't ever clarify anything, no. so we never know exactly what the rules are. They, they'll no. change the rules the day after. No. Um, I guess we can talk about something here that you liked, but I hated, and most of the majority on people hated. And this is your life segment that Derby clearly needs to just scrap altogether and never bring back ever again. Like you know, it's bad. You know, this is this was the worst segment, okay, 
on Raw when Darby doesn't even highlight it on their YouTube channel. It, you cannot watch it. You know where they you know where that cuts in during Bailey's entrance. They got no highlights before that. There was an article that came out that said WWE agreed that it was a bad segment. Well, duh. This was like the worst thing I've ever seen. I'd rather have watched Ellsworth for an hour. I mean, I watch Ellsworth for an hour every every. I would have agreed with you on that because this was garbage. This was so bad. And this is bad. Like the Kendo stick on a pole match. Whoever gonna have. booked this should be fired. But I think Alexa did the best she could with what she was given in the segment. But like, heaven forbid that we had Bailey get some Kendo stick training from Tommy Dreamer or something like that, and then they get physical as hell on like more and, physical than what they did this week. And isn't Bailey supposed to look good? Going no, into the match. She got, she got her ass whooped. What the hell was this? How does this do anything for their feud? This 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 is your life crap. They're going to an extreme rules match. I just found the most- Why is this your life necessary? <laughs> this was something that should have happened like three weeks ago, not on the go home show. But there were some cringe moments in this, I'll agree. When the, the the former boyfriend and the former best friend and then the, the former boyfriend said you know, <laughs> I've always had a thing for you. I just want to get close to Bailey to get close to you. And, like, they started making out. I'm like, what am I watching? Dude, the, the, the casual cow- crowd of Greenville, okay, South Carolina, was booing this. You they know were, when a casual crowd was booing this? They were deleting it. Ba- and deleting it. <laughs> They're sleeping. God. And, I mean, Alexa did the best she could with, with a couple. She had a couple of good lines in it, but. Why did Bailey wait to come out to? Why did she wait till the whole? Why didn't she just come out halfway Shouldn't through? Bailey have been out there for the whole thing, right? Like when the Rock and Mick Foley did it, Rock was out there the whole time when Mick Foley presented him with the "This is your life" thing. And I don't know what the what's going on. People pointed it out on Twitter, and I was kind of laughing uh, when uh, Alexa said "Big Phil." She kind of winked at Phil. <laughs> She's like, "Oh, Big Phil," and then she kind of looked down, <laughs> and I'm like, "What yes. is this?" It was great. Yeah, she was doing a lot of sexual innuendos during this. Yeah. It was great. But then the best part was is that Bailey tries climbing the, the friggin' rope to get yeah. the, the pole. <laughs> Alexa pulls her under, and then she's got one underneath the table. Smart. Oh the smart God. champion right there. And just one smack, and that's how we end it. How do I get excited for this match on Sunday? How? No, because Bailey's going to get buried, and it's going to be fantastic. This sucks. Like, this, this, they ruined a completely... Great feud for the women's title. And why does that have to be a kendo stick on a pole? Why Could can't it just be a, be a kendo regular... stick match? They keep saying Bailey can't get extreme. Why don't they just make it a standard extreme rules match? Right. Why does that have to be just kendo sticks? This is garbage, man. And if you're gonna do kendo sticks, at least have former people that you know use the kendo stick to help Bailey out. Right. I f- fucking garbage, man. Garbage, garbage, garbage. I hated it. It was like terrible. It. How do you like something like that? I loved it. Your girl is in it. It was bad. That's what I said. It was good. Oh, she man. She did the best she could. I, anyway. I, you know what? I'm giving Alexa full props for this trash segment. I feel bad for her. She had to go through that. She probably didn't even want to do that. That's what I mean. She did the. She made the most of it, and she kicked Bailey's ass to end the segment. Sure. I'm not excited for this. I think match. I'm one of only 100,000 people that actually like the segment. Probably. More heel gold dust promos this week. This was fantastic. Uh... Honestly, yeah, this, is, this is sad that this is the best part of Raw. I'm telling you right now, this is the best part of Raw. This is the only part I could give credibility to on the whole episode of Raw from start to finish. People can yell at me, oh, what about that triple threat match? Yeah, it was good, but it, it did nothing for me. It does nothing for the Extreme Rules match on Sunday. Why wasn't there any weapons used? They had a triple threat match. That means no DQ. Why didn't anyone use any weapons? Hype us for Extreme Rules. Does that Fatal 5-Way match have any... Stipulation, like are they? It's extreme rules. Is it? Yeah. No. Oh. <laughs> but no, we got nothing this week. Nothing in the Rollins and Reigns match. That's why this right here, the heel Goldust promo, was the only good thing about Raw this week. It was so well done. It brings back memories of the former Goldust when he made his debut. He cut such a good promo like that. But this time we had something different. We had our uh, truth cut in, and he gave his own version of a goldust like promo quoting a bunch of hollywood movies and um not bad man he actually this was actually a good serious promo our truth was very very serious yeah, you're gonna get too. got yeah um i'm excited for this feud i can't wait for I, I hope it doesn't turn out bad like usually uh sometimes when feuds on raw look exciting and end up turning out to be really bad aka darren young and the whole make darren young great again thing 
Um, but this feud actually looked good. I'm actually excited if they're going to do the whole heel Goldust thing. It's been a while since Goldust has been an actual heel in WWE. So I think, and we, we, we did say before that uh, Goldust wanted to go heel uh, before his uh, his last run, so yeah. Greg, can we have the return of Little Jimmy? I liked our truth as like like a psycho, where like he he was imaginary yeah, with imaginary friends and stuff. Yeah. Like that was cool. I liked our truth like that. <laughs> and then Triple H is like, are you talking to me or are you talking to that guy over there? <laughs> talking to Little Jimmy? And like <laughs> Triple H is like talking to his guys. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, it was great. Um, but yeah. Other stuff that happened on Raw, we had Miz TV, which led to the obvious uh, six-man tag. Ambrose and the Hardys defeated Miz, Sheamus, and Cesaro. Cool. Eli Sampson had faced a local jobber for some whatever wow. reason. Zach Evans. Cool. Literally lasted two minutes. Uh, Joe beat Balor and Wyatt again. Did nothing for me because I didn't hype anything for their match this Sunday. Rich Juan defeated Noam Dar to get their hype for their mixed tag match. And fuck, oh my god, Tool 5 Live was the worst thing I've ever seen with Alicia Fox and uh, oh, Sasha Banks having a ratchet fight at ringside. I don't know what that, man, I, I was cringing so hard when I seen that. Like, they're just at each other's hair, like typical, like, yeah, bar girls. Yeah, Alicia had some of her hair pulled out. Oh, man. Titus O'Neil defeated Kalisto, get some Titus brand hype. And uh, Austin Aries and Jack Gallagher defeated Neville and TJP. Oh my god, I, fr- I went back to watch one thing. It wasn't even part of Raw. It was afterwards. You know, you know how they do the yeah the, the fallout. fallout. Yeah, Titus Brand. Oh yeah, they had their they, own they press had, conference. They had a press conference. <laughs> yeah, with one person in there, and it was that uh, Tom Phillips lookalike guy. I don't even know his name. Oh yeah, that, I know and you're talking like, about. And they were like, "Does anybody have any questions?" And there's like nobody in the room, and he just raised his hand. Yes, you. And you just ask them, like, two questions, and then they're like, okay, we're done. Press conference over. I guess one thing you can pull from this is Aries may Neville tap, which is uh, big for their, their submission match on Sunday. Yep, and they had a they, – they did cut a promo to end 205 Live where Perkins and Neville ended up attacking yep. T, um, Aries, and yep. Neville put him in the rings of Saturn. So, like, that – that feud actually getting some hype. Like, yeah. I'm actually excited for that match. And then Roll- No Man Gains defeated Rollins. And, it, again, did nothing for their so Extreme Rules match. Rollins beats Balor and Rollins... Or, Reigns beats Balor and Rollins clean two weeks yep. in a row. Yep. I hope that means that he's not winning on Sunday. I hope that that's what that means. I hope they're just giving him his wins now so he can take the loss or take the... L- not really. It, it depends who gets pinned on Sunday. It's not even an elimination. Whoever gets the first pin wins. But it's Extreme Rules! Why didn't anyone use a table or anything this week? Or a chair? Get us hype for that match. Yeah, you, you want people to get into an Extreme Rules match, but you're not getting a stream at all. And you had the opportunity at a triple threat. That means no DQ. No one can get disqualified in that match. Why didn't anyone use a chair or something? God, it was just god-awful, man. Terrible booking. Lazy booking this week for That's all. That's why they should have had qualifying matches. Yep. Because now they've just... They keep putting the same five guys in... In singles, tag team, or triple threats for the last three weeks, and it's just rinse and repeat garbage. Yeah. Uh, Michael shows if we finally get a, t- a fatal four way with TJ Perkins, Gallagher, Neville, and Aries. I think eventually it could stem from this. I think uh, this will be the final one on one match between Neville and Aries, and then Aries might win it this think, Sunday. Well, we'll get into the predictions. Yeah. Uh, but I gave Raw two out of ten. I gave it a very low score this week because it was terrible, man. Two out of ten. That's it. I'll give it a three. Ouch! That's three. Uh, probably because you. I already know where you gave the the third point to. I'm giving it to the. This is your life segment. <sighs> God off. God off. Alexa holding the kendo stick and smacking Bailey in the back with it. That sure. deserves a point. Smackdown wasn't any better, but it was. It, it beat Raw. That's for sure. There's only three matches on Smackdown this week for a two hour show. What is this? A go home show? Three <laughs> matches. Smackdown Holy thinks moly. they're a go-home show this week. That's it. There could have been four, but we all know what happened. The the Fatal f- or the, the fatal 5-Way elimination match was supposed to happen. the 5-Way matches? Yeah. Uh, it was from the Phillips Arena in Atlanta, Georgia. Great crowd. Love it. Uh, Georgia's like the only southern state that's like doable to go to except for California. So like, California's not southern. Well, it's, it's pretty down there. You know what I mean? It's like not, it's, it's That's not the south, though. Okay, the bottom if, of... If you the, ask anybody from the south, they'll be like, that's not the south. Okay, anyone at the bottom of the United States. You look at the line where Texas is. The only good place where WWE goes to in, out of all those is either Georgia or California. It sucks when it goes to Texas. They only like, I don't know, I don't like my wrestler, uh, Roman Reigns. Yeah, he, he's good. He can punch people. 
Anyways, um, Phil, Atlanta, great crowd. That's what I'm trying to get at. Awesome. Uh, opening segment. Loved it. Loved it. Everyone cut a good promo on each other. Corbin's was really well done. Corbin is looking more credible day by day. I say it every week. This was a really good promo this week. He did a really, really good job. His lines were to the point. He made fun of both Owens and Nakamura. Guy's going to be a great heel champion one day. Huge. Uh, Shinsuke's English can use a little bit of work, man. Oh, it, it, this is, I think, the most he's ever talked ever, even in, since NXT. It's just killing it for me with his yeah. with his his promo. I feel like he just needs, if he's going to try to be this this artist, notice he shouldn't just talk. He should just kick people in the face. He should go to talk, drop the mic, and then kick someone in the face. Because his talking is is killing him right now. Yeah, uh, Owens is the best heel as a U.S. champion, though. Oh my God, man, the guy. Is beyond anything comparable to anyone right now on the on the roster as a heel. Um, on the mic, even on the mic, because Cor- he he's just that guy. That's who he is in real life. Yeah. Like he doesn't give a shit about anybody. Yeah. So it, it's him. It's just him being him, and that's the best part. And uh, Corbin and Owens attacked Nakamura, and then Zayn came out for the save. This leads to the obvious tag team match. SmackDown tag team matches go hand in hand. It was a really good match. I enjoyed it. Everyone looked good. Shocking. I thought, you know, in a tag team match like this, they would make only one person look good out of all three. But everyone got their shots in. Uh, Owens gets thrown into Corbin at one point. He got pissed off. <laughs> Punched Owens out. So he punches his own teammate out. Zayn tosses Corbin and himself out. And Owens gets keen shots out for the win for Nakamura. So Nakamura looking so, strong and pinning Owens twice. As Tyler Jones says, and yet KO gets buried again. Um, I think it makes sense this week. Maybe you're, you're, you're losing to a credible person like Nakamura. He's not really getting buried. I'd say if he's getting buried, if he was getting by... Nakamura is like the, the new upcoming star. They have to make him look good against some of these guys. Yeah. I think it looks... I, I, I think it's setting up for their live event feud, and maybe a possible feud after this. Maybe neither of them win the Money in the Bank ladder match, and they feud with each other after Money in the Bank. For the U.S. title? For the U.S. title. I think I'd, I'd love that. I think there's a there's a reason for him losing to... O, or Owens losing to Shinsuke in the last two weeks. Yeah, I was just glad it wasn't anyone else because then I would have agreed with everybody saying he got buried. Like, if he lost to, like, <laughs> Sin Cara last week and maybe he lost to, like, I don't know, Dolph Ziggler this week, you know? It just... Ugh. It's only it's only two weeks, guys. Relax. <laughs> I'm sure Owens will go back on a winning note. What if Owens was money in the bank ladder match, man? That's nuts. I've seen some theories of him holding both titles. That's what he said he uh, wanted to do. He wanted yeah. to be the face of America in the face of the WWE. Yeah. I think this is the. There's going to be something stem from this, so we'll see what happens at Money in the Bank. Um, we get a new kind of fashion files this week, so not the same uh, Law and Order ones as we usually gotten. This is like a 1930s black and white style one. I thought it was pretty. It was really well done and hilarious. Um, someone wrecked the fashion. Uh, police's head office, and they found a clue that was left behind by the wreckers, a cologne bottle. <laughs> and, and they looked, Tyree's like, looks like we found our next case. <laughs> it led to a match versus the Colognes. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, I love it. It's the comedic relief we have for SmackDown. It's hilarious. Even during the match, I, a lot of people give it criticism, saying, what the hell am I watching? Like, this is, this, this you need this for the demographic you show Raw and SmackDown to in the kids, man. I love that this is a great um, comedic relief here. Um, Vandango was wrestling in his trench coat. <laughs> and then at one point, uh, they were using their water guns and spraying the Usos in the face, or, or the Colognes in the face. And uh, Zongo ends up going under the ring at one point, too, and changes to his janitor outfit again. <laughs> and he wrestles in his janitor outfit, but he won! Tyler Breeze wins with the unprettier, too! Wow! Wow, he actually won with that. He didn't win yeah. with that at the pay-per-view. But great. And then uh, Van Dangle, man, getting some momentum. But uh, which we'll get into the next topic here. We don't know if they're going to be in title contention. Um, the Usos have a new feud. So they are in the ring, and they cut a really good promo this week. Really, they, man, They're cutting some really good heel promos, man. Savage bastards of the Usos, man. Yeah, mentioning the, the whole Falcons and Patriots thing in Atlanta, man. Like, what a way to get insane amount of heat by mentioning that in Atlanta man that was a perfect way to get heat uh, New Day make their return uh, hometown with Xavier Woods so he, he returns to a good ovation uh, they cut a promo on each other which were actually pretty decent uh, both of them cut a really good heel and babyface promo on each other at one point New Day got pretty serious too 
Uh, New Day say that Money in the Bank Shane booked them to face the Usos for their titles. See, I like the feud. I just wish the New Day would have earned it. Yeah, see, they should have been able to. They should have had to face like the Colognes or Brazongo, Brazongo, in a, in a yeah, qualify or American Alpha. Fuck, God only knows where they are. Yeah. Milk Carton is still out for them, and Ty Dillinger, who uh, Ty Dillinger again was on, not on SmackDown this week. Was of he in course. the dark match? I didn't even check if he was in the dark match against Aiden English for the twelfth time. Uh, but history was made on SmackDown this week. Uh, we were supposed to have a f- fatal five-way elimination match to determine the number one contender for Naomi's title. Uh, before the match even starts, there was a brawl, and the referee couldn't get control. And again, Michael Chow said, "Why didn't you just start the match? Why? Why didn't you just start it right off the bat?" He like waited. It looked they, kind of botched. They all brawled outside the ring. It was fantastic. Yeah, crazy brawling. We got a moonsault from Charlotte, and then she ends up power bombing Natty through the table. I'm like, oh my god, man! This is great. I this is awesome. It. A lot. Of, I love the physic, the physicality through for all of them through here. They're getting more extreme than the people on Raw for an Extreme Rules pay per view, right? And then Shane comes out and talks about how on fire the SmackDown Women's Division is. And it's sad because it is. They're more on, compared to what Raw has as a women's roster. This roster, which is lackluster, is better than the Raw one. That's so sad. Um, Shane Dan books the first ever Women's Money in the Bank ladder match. So it's finally come to fruition. We're finally going to get one. A Women's Money in the Bank ladder match. Um, here's a fact for y'all. Uh... The last time the women were involved in a ladder match. Uh, Sorry, I was laughing at some Greg's. Because <laughs> Xavier Woods said, oh, honey, to yeah, the Usos. I, remember that. I, I forgot about that. That was really yeah. good, too. Sorry, go ahead. The last time women were involved in a ladder match was in OVW. Holy shit. Yeah. On December 23rd, 2006, Beth Phoenix versus Katie Leah. For the undisputed OVW women's was title. Katie Lee Burchill? Was that Paul yep, Burchill's Katie sister? Lee Burchill. Yeah, Lee, uh, Lee Burchill. And if you got, again, Katie Lee was in uh, WWE back in 2008, 2009, and it was uh, Paul Burchill's sister. Yeah. So they competed in the first ever women's ladder match. Man, I'm so happy for these women, man. They finally get a shot. Like, we've been calling it for years to say, yeah. like, you know, why don't the women have a Money in the Bank ladder match? Like, they deserve yeah. it just as much as the guys do. And speaking of Michael Chow put in the chat, what do you think will happen with Naomi in the title at Money in the Bank? Will there be an open challenge, or the second time in a row the title won't be defended? Maybe she faces, like, Lana. Yeah. Oh, yeah, maybe maybe she has, like, an open challenge and Lana enters it, maybe. I could see that happening. Uh, But, I mean, and... <laughs> For someone that loves the women as much as I do and so much of an advocate for the women's division, I have to miss Money in the Bank. I'm not even going to see the first yeah, women's Money right. in the Bank ladder match. That line. sucks. <laughs> Unbelievable. But, I mean, they're finally getting some momentum because, like, I was the, – the the SmackDown women's division was stale as bread yeah. since Mania. Yeah. And it really since the, the shakeup, since they took Alexa off and Brad and Charlotte and then had this – that cringe freaking triple th- – or six-person tag. And, like, it didn't get me excited for it. Now, like, this is actually, like, yeah, really exciting for all the girls. And, like, they had a really good Talking Smack segment afterwards. Just, they were all on there. Yeah. Shane kicked Ellsworth off right away. <laughs> um, and it was just really good. Like, they were all talking about, you know, how much this means to them. And, like, they want to prove it, even though that they're all scared of heights. Yeah. But uh, Styles Homecoming. Oh, we also had for this. He told uh, everybody to rock the red uh, a couple days before the yeah. new Styles red. There are a lot of red shirts out there. I noticed it. Uh, Styles going one on one with Ziggler in his hometown. Good match. I think the, the end of the match though was botched. A lot of people giving criticism that Styles getting buried. Um, Ziggler super kick Styles, but it looks like his foot was supposed to be on the rope, and the pi- and the ref ended up counting to three. And after the pin was done, Styles' foot was then on the rope. It looks like he kind of it kind of missed the rope on the first attempt. So well, I, I, well Ziggler grabbed both of his legs. Yeah, but it, when he when he hooks him, the one foot was supposed to touch the rope because after the the pin was done and Ziggler kind of let go, the foot then dropped on the rope. It and seemed... people were pointing at it during the pin because his foot was kind of it, again. It's one of those rules that he keeps forgetting that if the foot's even underneath the rope and not on the rope, it's still like a rope break. So. I don't know. I think, I, I think, and also, the match ended too premature, in my opinion. I feel like yeah. they could have given a lot more. Like, I loved the match, but, like, I wanted them to go, like, 10 minutes. Maybe. I think it was supposed to hit the rope, and Ziggler was supposed to get pissed, and maybe there was supposed to be, like, a confrontation between Styles after, and maybe Ziggler was still ended up supposed to win. But I think there's there's more to that match that was supposed to happen, but it didn't because of what happened there. It just it was really awkward because usually when someone's that close to the rope, that means they're going to, yeah. like, get a rope break, right? 
Also, I, I didn't understand why Styles made his foot go on the rope after the pin. I don't know if you just... He actually got hit in the face from that super kick and it made him daze for a couple of seconds. But as for the result, the people out there who say that it was bad, then you clearly don't know how to book a storyline because yeah. Dolph Ziggler was the one guy in this match that was not getting any any respect whatsoever, even yeah. though he's the only one that's actually won a Money in the Bank ladder match. Nobody was giving him any respect to be even in this com- uh, conversation with either any of the four guys. Yeah. And to give him a big win over probably the favorite in the match is great. Yeah, it makes it, him it look credible. Him and, and people will, will double think now to me, oh, fuck, maybe Ziggler will win it, man. He pinned AJ Styles the other week. He could win it. it I love that Ziggler got a yeah. big win over Styles. In his hometown. It's typical WWE fashion, burying people in their hometown. Good for Ziggler, man. And he cut a really good promo on Talking Smack after, too. So I really like this Ziggler. And Shane was saying, you know, when when you try, you're one of the best wrestlers in the company. And Ziggler's yeah. like, you know what? I agree. Sometimes I, I get it to my head a little bit. And when I want to perform, I go out there and I show it. So yeah. so SmackDown, I gave a 5 out of 10 this week. Good 5. It wasn't bad. It wasn't. As great, okay, sorry. Raw was worse, but SmackDown was better just by a little bit. So I gave it a five. You steal my ratings all the time. <laughs> you gave it a five? Give it a five, too. <laughs> they, they didn't have a lot of wrestling. I was shocked that there was only three matches for a two hour show. I loved the women's segment. Yeah. Uh, the announcement, I mean, the money in the bank and the brawl was great. Yeah. Uh, the Charlotte Power Bomb was crazy. Uh, the the Ziggler getting the big win over Styles. I would have loved for that match to go ten minutes longer because both those guys are just incredible talents in the yeah. ring. And the Brazongo fashion files, I guess, return a new day. It was just yeah. okay. Yeah. Like it was it was okay. Yeah. It was yeah, I guess. SmackDown okay. finally after like three bad weeks in a row, they finally got back up to okay status. I I enjoyed it. So uh that's SmackDown review, and we don't have the list of 10 this week, so we'll just jump right into it, and that's the WWE headlines. We're talking about any news and rumors about the WWE, so hit that headline music. That's right. Welcome to WWE Headlines, a part of the show where we talk about any news and rumors going on in the WWE. And Mason, uh, I like... I'm a Styles fan too, but just like you, I, I wanted Ziggler to get this win because he really needed it. Yeah. That's what I had to say. And like I tweeted out before, guys, we have some good news this week. Interesting news and huge news. So you guys want to tune in for that. And I'm going to make sure I tweet out again, guys. You have to tune into this news part because we have some very, very interesting news this week. And the one we'll start off with is a big Rusev return update. This is huge. Okay, guys. So, so you know, sit back, relax, and uh, get ready for this. Um, featured in a video on SmackDown Live a few weeks ago, he told Shane McMahon that he wanted to be WWE champion. He wanted WWE championship opportunity at Money in the Bank. He also tweeted that he would be showing up on the May 16th episode of SmackDown to confront Shane, and he never appeared. And we haven't heard since for uh, of Rusev since. The Wrestling Observer reports that Rusev is in a limbo with Jinder Mahal as WWE champion. Rusev was originally supposed to face Randy Orton for the WWE title at Money in the Bank. This was clearly being teased by WWE on SmackDown Live with Rusev demanding a title shot from Shane and he wouldn't report to from Shane or he wouldn't report to the Blue Brand. WWE seemingly changed its mind and made Jinder Mahal champion at Backlash. As a result, this has left Rusev with nothing to do at the moment. Um it is unclear if WWE will find a way to add him into the Money in the Bank ladder match or if he'll just be sidelined for the time being. It certainly seems like the recent push of Jinder has led to Rusev taking a back seat. It's unfortunate for Rusev, man, because he seemed like he was going to come in there and make a big, big statement. Yeah, dude, Rusev was supposed to... It was supposed... Jinder wasn't supposed to win the title. It was supposed to be Rain Jordan. Maybe the original plan was for not Jinder winning the title until that live event in India in September. Now Maybe they're, they're just going to build them. Now they're not having the India live events. That's another piece yeah. of news. But I would love to see Rusev, like, at Money in the Bank, like, just come out and, like, be added to the match. Yeah. But I assume he won't unless the Predators lose four straight games and he doesn't have to watch the series <laughs> anymore. But I don't, oh, man, that sucks. That sucks. It sucks for him, man, because yeah. he was about to come back in and be put right in the main title Maybe picture. he attacks someone backstage before the match, and then he takes their spot. Can he, t- can he be the one to attack Enzo, even though he's on a different God. show? God. 
But yeah, huge news regarding Rusev. Got some Table for Three news and the future of Table for I Three. I love that. That's one of my favorite shows on the network. So, for all of you who don't know, Table for Three is an original show on the network. Three, Table for Three it has three WWE personalities sit down together for dinner and shoot the breeze about their careers. There have been some entertaining episodes, including the Eric Bischoff, Hayes, and Jim Cornette that aired this past week. According to a new report, Vince McMahon could be appearing on an episode in the new near future. That would be awesome. The latest Wrestling Observer newsletter says that the idea of Vince being on Table for Three is being discussed. The people in charge of the WWE Network would love to see Vince appear because any network shows he he is a draw for viewers. Vince has appeared on WWE Network show like the Steve Austin podcast, but he doesn't do them often. Some potential Table for Three with Vince McMahon ideas being pitched right now are as follows. Vince Bischoff and Heyman. Vince Stephanie and Shane McMahon. Or Vince Pat Patterson and Jerry Briscoe. <laughs> the Stooges. Yeah. <laughs> I also heard something about Ted Turner, too. Oh, God. <laughs> that would be hilarious. I don't even know if Ted would agree. <laughs> He'd be like, no, you got to plug my network. <laughs> They do every time on freaking Monday Night War, Ted. The TNT. Yeah. Uh, WWE has great interest in Ring of Honor star. There have been rumors for the past month that former Ring of Honor stars Adam Cole and Kyle O'Reilly are heading to the WWE. According to a new report, there is a third name that has been added to the list. According to the Wrestling Observer, WWE is said to be in great interest with Ring of Honor star Dalton Castle. The report says that his contract expires at the end of June with Ring of Honor. The company would the company would have to offer Castle something big if they want to match WWE's current offer to him. Names like Cole O'Reilly and now Castle have been rumored for the past few months, but nothing has come out of it yet. It appears like it might be a contract relate. It might be contract related. WWE has to wait, or has to wait for a certain amount of days after the deal expires to legally offer them a contract. Uh, we will have to wait and see. As time passes, we might get some uh, names showing up on NXT in the future. Uh, an exciting prospect for WWE fans as Castle is extremely talented. By the way, where is Maria and uh, Mike Bennett? Really read nothing about them. I've been Actually, the other day I was trying to find more news. Nothing has come out. I don't know if there's a physical thing that's for trying to clear or what. I saw something on Twitter the other day. Adam Cole, you, you're going to die. He had a mixed tag match on on uh, on some uh, independent wrestling event. Guess who he teamed up with? Britt Baker. Oh my god! He teamed no. up with Britt Baker. Get baked. <laughs> she got baked. Imagine oh WWE signed god. Britt Baker. Apparently, she's a decent wrestler in the independents. Yeah, <laughs> Michael Chow, Vince Roman, and John Cena. <laughs> Greg, I like that. Vince Triple H and Heyman. How about uh, Triple H, Roman, and Cena? Because those are the three barriers of talent right yeah. there. <laughs> Uh, I got some Hulk Hogan fu- Derby's future update. God, brother. Hulk Hogan was blacklisted by Derby after news broke out of his racist rant back in 2015. The company immediately terminated any association with the Hulkster. Over the past year, we have seen Hogan showing back up on the Derby network advertisements and small Derby related things. It has been a few years now, but Hogan still hasn't made an appearance on Derby television since the incident. In the latest Wrestling Observer newsletter, Dave Meltzer says that there have been inter- internal discussions within WWE about bringing Hulk Hogan back in an ambassador-type role. WWE is trying to estimate what the response would be if they did so. They don't want any backlash because it is a tricky situation. On the Wrestling Observer Radio, Meltzer has also noted that Hulk and Vince McMahon have been talking about a potential return recently. He speculates that Derby, Derby ha- was considering bringing him back for WrestleMania 33, but they felt like it wasn't the right time. It is unclear when exactly the right time will be. Hulk Hogan played a massive role in WWE history, and it is difficult to erase him from the fans' memories. On the other hand, the company might still receive bad mainstream press if they do decide to bring him back. What he said was like 15 years ago in a different time period. Yeah, they need to just drop it and just bring him back. Look at all the stuff that Trump has said in the last two years, let alone, and no one's... Anyway, I don't want to get into politics. Michael Chow, apparently Adam Cole and Britt Baker are dating in real life. Okay, I didn't know that. Wow. Michael Adam Cole getting baked. <laughs> and he says, "How about Vince Roman and Cena? Worst rated segment since the Bailey. This is your hey, come on." Yeah. 
Greg, hold up. If WWE brings back Hogan, they better bring back Paige. I'm just saying, yeah, right? Is that Kyle talking, not Greg? That's, 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 uh, I, I hacked Greg's account. Clearly. Uh, rumored plans for the winner of the Extreme Rules Fatal Five Way winner. At Extreme Rules Sunday night, there will be a Fatal Five Way match. Roman Reigns will take on Finn Balor, Bray Wyatt, Samoa Joe, Seth Rollins. The winner will earn themselves a WWE title, Universal title shot against Brock Lesnar. According to Dave Meltzer, uh, the plans are still for Braun Strowman to return and face Brock Lesnar at SummerSlam. Strowman has been out of action for the past couple of weeks, undergoing elbow surgery. WWE says that he could be out for at least six months, but it seems like he will be back a lot sooner. As a result of this, Meltzer said the feud between the winner of the Fatal 5-Way match and Brock will be a quick program. That means a singles match, a great balls of fire, and no rematch. Uh, also, according to reports from WrestleZone, Brock is being advertised locally to face Bray Wyatt at the June 26th Raw in Los Angeles. This will likely be a dark match after the show, but could indicate a future match between the two. Nothing, defi- nothing definite, but something to think about. Bray seems to like to be a top candidate for a one-match throwaway opponent for Brock. I just don't want to see Bray get buried. Yeah. So you look at it, you look at the five guys. Who is likely to be the one-match guy? Out of all this, and I can already tell who it is because they can start a feud right after it. Finn Balor. I don't think Balor finally gets his his uh, his. He never got the the title shot that he should be getting because he never lost the title. Then at Great Balls of Fire, Bray Wyatt interferes and costs Finn Balor the title, and then they stem their feud into SummerSlam for that. I just don't think Balor versus Lesnar would be a good match at all. Yeah. It would be a terrible match because Lesnar and, and Finn are just completely different. Yeah. Michael Chalice is Seth Rollins. He sees Seth Rollins winning because he's already wrestled Lesnar That's, and this feud is expandable. God, Michael Chow and I have really similar opinions. I'm, gonna, I, I'm picking Rollins too. I would, I'm going to go with Balor. We'll see. But, I just uh, don't know. I just, Balor versus Lesnar is just not going to be an entertaining match. Like Balor is going to get completely fucking buried. He's going to get suplexed 12 times. Oh, well, maybe he's he's quick and small. Maybe he he he'll be the one to. What escape small guy Brock. has ever beaten Brock Lesnar? I don't know. None. Maybe maybe they do like a quick thing. Maybe it's a quick, you know another. The only way I can see that happening is if so if Bray Wyatt. Greg says match. Samoa Joe and Mason Dunbar says Samoa Joe. As long as people don't say Roman Reigns, I don't care who the fuck wins the match. <laughs> you know, Juggy would say Roman Reigns though. Yeah, well, he's he's MIA like Big Show right yeah. now. So, but that's it for the the news. Some good news articles that there. Was, that was good news. Yeah. So, let's get into the Extreme Rules 2017 predictions. These are going to be our predictions, ladies and gentlemen, me and myself, myself and Cobra Cappy. So, uh, let's get into the predictions. And uh, we'll start off with the, well, we think it might be the pre-show match or if they're going to add a pre-show match. But we'll start off with Sasha Banks and Rich Swan versus Alicia Fox and Noam Dar. Uh, just because t- typical WWE, I'm saying that your girl and Rich Swan are going to lose. Again, we say that it should be Cedric Alexander and not Rich Swan. I know it's Rich Swan's hometown. But I do not care. It doesn't make an excuse for him to be added to this when you have Cedric Alexander, who is the perfect candidate for this because of the history he has with Alicia Fox and Noam Dar. But uh, I'm going with Alicia Fox and Noam Dar over this. I just think they're going to win just because of typical WWE. I think if it's a pre-show match. I'm just going with Sasha and uh, Rich Swan. That's it. That's all I got to say. I don't want to see Sasha dancing anymore. I want her to see back in the title yeah. feud, next pay per view. Yeah. Apparently, Eddie Guerrero is a small guy. Okay, he's small, but he's not <laughs> that small. Eddie Guerrero is actually muscular. Well, Finn Balor, you know, he's cut. You know, fan girls love him. I, I guess, but I, I now I cannot see anybody small beating Brock Lesnar. Like Vince has a boner. For well, he's the not big the guys. He's not going to. Well, we know, small but we know Lesnar's going to win. Unbelievable. Anyway. Uh, Cruiserweight title match. Submission match for the Neville versus Austin. Er, for the Cruiserweight title, Neville versus Austin Aries. <laughs> A-double. Submission match. This is going to be crazy. Uh, I think A-double finally gets uh, his win over Neville. Yeah. It's been two pay-per-views now. Yeah, I think I'm going to go with Aries, too. He's finally going to get the win, man. Unless they just, they're so big on Neville or just don't care. and They're just going to keep Neville the champion until they figure out to do something with 205 Live. I like A-double. to he. I think he yeah. finally deserves to be at least Cruiserweight champion. This guy could be in the main title picture if yeah. they pushed him right, but it seems like they, they want to bury the yep. former TNA guys. So Austin Aries would be a great... They both hit their each other's finishers on each other on each other in the last week. So And these are the only two guys in the Cruiserweight division right now that are credible. Like, I'm really, really looking bad. forward to that. It's really bad. I'm That might even my... You know what? No one dare to be. That might be the pre-show match. They did it to us at WrestleMania. 
So oh. why not do it now? Uh, we'll move on. Match I'm really looking forward to. The Hardys and Shea Zaro. Uh, steel cage match for the WWE Raw Tag Team titles. Sw- cue the Swanton Bonds right off the cage. It's probably going to happen, man. Jeff's a crazy guy. He can still do it. We're probably going to see one. Uh, cue the delete chance. Cue the yes from Matt Hardy maybe in the version gets, one. Maybe he gets more broken in this match. Yeah, I think they're gonna lose the titles. I'm going with Shazar on this one, man. I think the Hardys are finally gonna lose the titles, and I think that I think it's it. I think the t- the Hardys are gonna lose them here. I get this strange gut feeling that uh, Shazar is gonna walk out with the titles here, man. I don't know. I got that's that's all I'm God, saying. Can you guys stop talking about Heath Slater and 3MB in the chat? Seriously. <laughs> No way Heath Slater beats Brock Lesnar. Okay, let's get that out of the way. Anyway, I'm picking the Hardys to retain. I, I was thinking Shazaro for a while, but I don't think they'll do three title changes in the same night. I think they might just hold the titles until they finally get the delete gimmick bot. I think the Revival is going to beat them for the titles. Oh, so, okay. okay. Uh, I'm going with the Hardys to retain in this steel cage. It should be a pretty entertaining match. I'm looking forward to that. That's going to be crazy. And we really hope it's a tornado tag like we've said for the last three weeks. Yeah. Alexa Bliss versus Bailey in a kendo stick on a pole oh WCW Lord. match <laughs> for the Raw Women's Title. Oh. Hey, don't, I don't care about this match. I honestly don't give a shit. Sure, Alexa Bliss is going to retain. You know what's bad when our, our girls are in this match and we both don't give a shit about the match? Yeah, I'm sorry. There might be a chance where Bailey actually wins it back. In a terrible match like this, in a match we don't, we're don't we not looking forward to, this might be a match where Bailey wins the title back. No. Nope. No, 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 no. But I want what I want is to Alexa Bliss uh, retain here. What if Sasha Banks also makes an appearance in this match, and then starts the feud that leads into the triple threat at uh? Actually, that's probably not going to happen until Great Balls of Fire. There's still another Raw pay per view in between. My prediction is where the fuck has Nia Jax been lately? So I think she gets involved and screws Bailey over. Yeah, yeah, she also because uh, Nia Jax has been nowhere for the yeah. last three weeks. And they keep they keep showing her and Alexa together in like in these yeah. new Extreme Rules um, uh, photo shoots together. So I think Nia Jax comes in and helps. She made Alexa that savage retain. tweet towards uh, the Raw Creative oh, team. Man. So, uh, so I'm saying Alexa retains with help from Nia Jax. I'm gonna pick Alexa Bliss too. I just I won't be surprised if this match is just horrible and Bailey ends up retaining for some whatever reason because we've seen questionable title changes in the past and seriously over the last year. Or so. I'm not putting it out of the question that Bailey might even win here. So, but I'm gonna, I'm hoping Alexa Bliss. I'm gonna go with Alexa Bliss. Uh, move on. Intercontinental Championship. Dean Ambrose versus The Miz. If Ambrose gets himself disqualified, he still loses the title to The Miz. Why this wasn't just an Extreme Rules match and they could have just had something other than this stipulation? I really don't like the stipulation. I know it makes sense in the way they've booked this feud, Fuck but they just have an Extreme Rules match, right? Uh, for some reason. My gut's telling me that Ambrose is going to get himself disqualified, and then he's going to lose the title to the Miz. But uh, why would you put that stipulation in there if it's? Not, I'm just, it, they're probably going to yeah. tease it like Ambrose like is yeah. close to getting himself disqualified, but maybe not completely. So I'm going to go Ambrose defending or you know retaining, sorry, his title, and I don't care because the, I don't care about this feud. We, I liked this feud when it was on SmackDown, but then we we seen it again when they exactly. both went over to Raw. Like, be, why do we need to see it again? I hope this is the end of the line and they the they stem off shake up. Different. We're supposed to get new feuds, not yeah. two guys going from one brand to the other having the exact same feud. Right. I'm going with Miz. I think Miz is going to win it back, and that's why I said that there wasn't going to be three title changes because I think Aries is winning. Yeah. And then I think the Hardys are going to retain, and then uh, I think Miz will win the IC title back because Ambrose does nothing for me with the belt. Yeah, absolutely nothing. Move on. Extreme Rules Fatal Five Way Match for the number one contendership for Brock Lesnar's Universal Championship. Uh, the one Man, the Universal is... Championship that's only going to be defended three times a year for 2017. Finally, a match that's not that's too close to call. Yeah, there's so many different possibilities here. I'm probably going to stick with my pick of Balor, but I could see Wyatt winning. I could see Rollins winning. I could see Joe winning. I really don't want Roman to win. <laughs> the only way I want Roman to win is if they want to get the Brock and Roman feud out of the way that way we don't have it for WrestleMania. I can see Roman winning here because Braun Strowman wants revenge on Roman Reigns, <laughs> man. He's going to win. He's going to come take his revenge on him at freaking Great Balls of Fire during his match with Lesnar. Why? This is just typical WWE right, right here. It's, it's written on the stone. Vince has already chiseled it in. I think he's chiseled in the triple threat of the century. I'm just going to, he's like, oh, I'm just going to add these other four guys to fuck with your head. 
I think he's got a boner for this triple threat for SummerSlam between Brock, Braun, and Roman. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, I'm changing my pick. Roman Reigns is winning this fucking match, man. Roman Reigns is going to win. I'm telling you right now, it's over with. He's going to win. And it's go- it, oh, it just because Darby's logical booking, they're going to go with Roman Reigns because of the history that Roman has with Reigns, and that's why he's going to come back a great balls of fire. I'm going Roman Reigns. He's going to fucking win this match. The the only reason I want Roman Reigns to win is that so the main event of next year's WrestleMania isn't Brock and Roman like they said it was going to be. Yeah. But honestly, if I had to pick a guy that I want to win, Joe and Brock would be such a good match because they're two badass big dudes that could actually legit be fighters. You know what I mean? Like yeah. those are two guys that would have a, a fight. I'm just I would saying, love don't Joe to win. don't count WWE to be freaking WWE logical booking. Man, I I'm guarantee you Roman Reigns is gonna f- win this match, man. Michael Chow, you say that again, you're getting blocked from the chat. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I'm going with Rollins yeah. because I think because Ra- Rollins and Lesnar have unfinished history with uh, Brock or Seth cashing in the Money in the Bank at uh, WrestleMania two years ago. Yeah, and then they had the rematch where Rollins won dirty. So yeah. I think they could do that match again, and I feel like it could be a one off for Seth. Because we all know Lesnar is probably retaining at Great Balls of Fire. Like, let's be real yeah, here. Yeah. So I think Rollins versus Brock would be a good, a good mat, well, one-off match. So I'm going with Seth. I'm sorry, man. I got. I'm sticking with Roman Reigns. As much as I want to go with any other pick, I I'm going to be logical booking, and they're going to go logical, and they're going to pick Roman Reigns. I'm calling it right now. Roman Reigns is winning this goddamn match, and we're not going to care about the Universal Title because who cares about it right now? It's Vince McMahon, man. It all comes down to him, and he's just like, oh, I go, Roman Reigns, yes, yes. I'll put these other guys in here to mess with people's heads. Roman Reigns, logical booking. Strowman's going to come back for his revenge. Oh. I want Balor to get his rematch. I just don't want him to face Lesnar. Like, yeah. I want him to get his universal yeah. title shot when, like, Roman has the belt. Yeah. But Joe and Lesnar would be a good match. It I would. just don't think it's going to happen. But... Not yet. So, Too he- my pick of Seth and your pick of uh, the big dog. Yeah. Sadly, Too bad for it's Juggy sad. Into the show, man, yeah. he would have loved it. It's sad that I'm picking Roman Reigns right now. I don't. I don't like picking Roman Reigns. I'm just thinking WWE logic wise. I'm picking Roman Reigns. I'm going with the logical way out. That's it. But uh, I think that's gonna do it. That's all we have for today, right? That's it. That's it. Thank today. You, Thank you, Mason. Joe and Lesnar would be a great match. It would be a good match, but mm, Roman Reigns. It's his yard. It's a new t shirt. show today, guys. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to the Yankees Jays game tonight in Toronto. Going mm, to see my Yankees. Fantastic. So. Um, <laughs> anyways, uh, that's going to wrap it up for week number nine of the Lowdown Show on No Holds Barred Wrestling Podcast, where you're Canadian based WWE podcast that reviews Monday Night Raw and Tuesday Night SmackDown from the past week. Also, during the show today, we had our WWE headlines where we talked about any important news and rumors related to the WWE. Remember, every week the Lowdown Show is broadcasted live right here on Spreaker, available at Spreaker.com slash NHBWP or on the Spreaker app, available for all Android and Apple devices. After we are done recording, the podcast is posted in full on Spreaker itself or on our YouTube channel, YouTube.com slash NHBWR, and also on iTunes and Stitcher Radio by searching up the Lowdown Show. You can follow the podcast on Twitter at No Holds Bar, WP, enjoy on the conversation and have your thoughts and questions read right here on the show. We're also available on Facebook and Instagram by searching No Holds Barred WP. All links will be down in the description below on our YouTube video. I am your host, the self-proclaimed greatest host, Kyle Masters. Every week, I'm continuing to be joined by my co-host. He is the blissful boss, Mr. Corporate himself, Corporate Cappy. Yes, Greg, I will enjoy the game. And Juggy's on a Brock Lesnar contract. <laughs> yeah, he appears every three months. Other than that, guys, we're always here reminding you to keep it on the lowdown. Where you